Okay. So the recipe that we're making today is the creamy spinach artichoke pasta. Oh, before we begin, for anyone who hasn't ever been to these um, kind of meetings or cooking demonstration before, my name is Jasmine Alvarez. I am the Wellcats dietitian. And today, um, without further ado, we're going to be making the creamy spinach artichoke pasta. So this is going to serve approximately four people. It has 420 calories, which is pretty low for how delicious of a pasta this looks like. It has 19 grams of protein, 15 grams of fat, and then 52 grams of carbohydrate, which is pretty much pretty equal um, to what it should be. And then um, the ingredients that we're using today are the eight ounces of whole wheat rotini. Let me admit one more person. Eight ounces of whole wheat rotini. I just used the one that I got from my local HEB. So make sure you choose the one that says 100% whole wheat um, pasta. Um, there's some out there that just say whole wheat. That doesn't guarantee it's gonna be that 100% whole wheat. Um, and there is a difference. The whole wheat means that they could even put two, 5% of the whole wheat grains in there um, and then still market it as a whole wheat product. So make sure it says that 100%. And then um, a 14 can or 14 ounce can of the artichoke hearts. I went ahead and opened mine already. I just got the quartered again from my HEB um, artichoke hearts. And this is them. I drained them a little bit. Let me admit one more person. I drained them a little bit. Um, and then I went ahead and just like pulled them apart. So that's the artichoke hearts right there. And then um, four ounces of low fat cream cheese. So today, um, because I don't eat dairy, we're going to do a dairy free version of this recipe. So I'm really interested to see how this turns out. Um, but I did get my um, kind of vegan or dairy free cream cheese right here. I only did this because I wanted to actually be able to try it for y'all instead of just being like, all right, well, here's the recipe. It looks good. Who knows what it tastes like? So um, here's my dairy free cream cheese. But of course you could just use the low fat cream cheese that it mentions in the recipe. And I attempted to cut it into chunks that, that didn't go over too well. And then the reduced fat milk. So for this recipe, I'm using almond milk, but y'all of course can use the reduced fat milk. It will probably turn out a little bit creamier um, than what mine is gonna turn out today. And then half a cup of the grated Parmesan cheese. And I have my kind of little concoction of Parmesan, Parmesan cheese over here. It's mostly um, this one that I made. I usually do garlic powder, salt, um, ground cashews and nutritional yeast. And that kind of gives it that um, cheesy flavor, but that's for me, for y'all 100%, you can use the Parmesan cheese. And then um, two teaspoons of garlic powder. Um, I'm not gonna show that one, it's garlic powder. And then half a teaspoon of ground pepper. I um, saw in the picture right here that they kind of have these little red, I think it might be red pepper flakes, but it, I thought it would be, this recipe would be good with some pimentos. So I might add a little bit of that. I'm gonna listen, I'm gonna listen while I drive. Oh, there we go. All righty. So, made it, but she was like, it tastes much better unhealthy. Like, yeah. um, the first um, step one is to bring a large saucepan of water to a boil. Um, I went ahead and cooked the pasta for us already because I'm pretty sure we all know how to cook pasta. It's just sitting here ready to go. We're gonna put that into the sauce in a little bit. And the second part is to cook and chop the artichoke hearts, um, oh, cook the chopped artichoke hearts on a medium heat for three to four minutes. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna position you over here to where hopefully, hopefully you can see my pan. Okay, there we go. Um, let me turn on the stove really quickly. That's the wrong burner. All righty. So cook the artichoke hearts for three to four minutes. I am going to add, this pan is not a nonstick pan. I chose a glass one today so that hopefully y'all can see a little bit better. I'm gonna add just a little bit of oil in there because I do not want my artichoke hearts sticking to the bottom. I'm just gonna do a tiny bit of olive oil just to prevent it from sticking. There we go. 
And then it says to cook it on a medium heat. We're gonna go ahead and reduce that and pour it in there. It says to cook these for three to four minutes. And then the spinach, um, it wants an entire 10 ounce thing of spinach. I chose baby spinach, normal spinach is fine. Um, this is a lot of spinach, but as we know, for anyone who cooks spinach, it's probably going to cook down like crazy. Um, in retrospect, I probably should have made a bigger pan because it looks like this spinach is not going to fit in. So let me grab a bigger pan and I'm going to maybe transfer all of it because this is just, this is a ton of spinach. I'm going to mute this for just a second because it's going to be loud as I dig out this pan. We got our much larger pan here. And you know what? Today, I think I'm just gonna cook everything separately. It says to cook the spinach in with the artichoke hearts, but I'm just gonna cook it separately because the way that my pans are, we're gonna improvise. Again, I'm gonna add a teeny tiny bit of olive oil to this one because I don't want it to stick. I'm gonna turn on this one as well. Artichokes are already sizzling. That'll be good. Since we're draining on step like, yep, on step three, we're draining everything anyway. So everything's getting separated anyway. So I'm just gonna go ahead and keep on with the two pan thing. I'm gonna put in my spinach, I lost some. And you can, like I said, just use um, like the normal spinach as well. It's a lot cheaper that way. I think this box cost me like four and a half dollars. Um, but if you buy the actual just bunches of spinach, it's way cheaper. I think it's like a dollar twenty, a dollar fifty for each of those, and they give you a lot of spinach. For those, I would just recommend that you wash them thoroughly because this comes pre-washed right but the other little bunches are not pre-washed and you can actually feel some of the dirt that it like grew in on the spinach itself so pre-wash that super duper well cut off the stems and then kind of cut them into thinner slices because the leaves are like that big compared to the baby spinach which is really little but if you did want a more kind of economical way of doing that all righty artichoke hearts i want to get them pretty nice and toasty just so that they have a really strong flavor and the spinach is going to cook down hi jasmine yes this is, do you recommend any type of uh I, I think you can buy this on in the stores um the wash for fruit and vegetables there's some sort of i think those have like iodine in them or something. Oh, I think okay. that's the washing part of it from my yeah. knowledge. Um, and I don't see why not. I don't think it's necessary. I've read a couple different articles for a couple different of my classes that show that um, washing with like soap and water or just water vigorously washing it, like if you um, really move it around and get everything nice and wet and let the water run through kind of in a strainer, um, that that actually does just as well as actually soaking it in that vegetable wash. So okay. yeah, it's, it's something that you definitely could do, but I don't think it's 100% necessary um, to kind of sanitize it. You just need to get everything, all the dirt, all the potential bacteria that could be on there off the actual fruits and vegetables, but yeah. Right. Okay. Sounds good. Um, all righty. So that is going... I could have probably also pre-prepared that a little bit, but I think this is nice because y'all are able to see exactly how long this is going to take um, because this recipe is supposed to be 30 minutes or less because it's one of those stress buster recipes. Let me stir some stuff up real fast. Where did my, I lost my utensil, there it is. All right. I think the 
artichoke hearts are finished. They have a different color. Let's see if y'all can notice that. Um, they're kind of a little bit darker. So we're going to turn those off now and we're gonna keep cooking our spinach. until it's wilted. I'm going to move my artichoke hearts back into my little bowl because they're going to be added into the sauce in just a second. It says to strain them, but this does not have any moisture because I already strained them whenever I got them out of the can. Alrighty. Do any of y'all particularly not like artichokes? I personally love them. <laughs> and I love spinach artichoke dip. So I'm really hoping that this will turn out to taste as good as an actual spinach artichoke dip. Oh, that spinach artichoke dip is wonderful. <laughs> I know, it's kind of addicting. It's a little worrisome because I could probably eat like an entire tub of it with whatever I choose to eat it with, like chips or vegetables or anything. Um, so hopefully this will be a nice, like, not, yeah, have the same flavor and everything, but be just a tiny bit more healthy because I know that those spinach and artichokes dips are normally pretty, <laughs> pretty um, high in fat and usually really high in sodium. So yeah, hopefully this will be a nice kind of alternative. All right, so that spinach is pretty much all the way wilted. I don't want it to turn this into complete mush. So we're gonna turn that off. Then I'm gonna get another bowl and we're gonna move that to the side as well. And we'll be right back with my bowl. bad. So as you can see, maybe the spinach really, it was 10 ounces of spinach and it wilted down into being almost the same size as the artichokes. Barely any more. Okay, there we go. Spinach is done. Artichokes are done. Now, um, again, I didn't see any liquid in there. So no need to strain anything. And then in the same pan, add cream cheese and milk. So I'm going to take my pick. I'll do, I'll do the bigger one. Um, we're going to add the cream cheese in there. So I guess I'll turn it back on now. Cream cheese. And then the milk and whisk it until the cheese is melted. And I'll bring y'all over here to kind of watch this process. This is the part I'm most nervous about because typically dairy-free cheeses and milks just do not behave in the same way as normal cheeses and milks. So <laughs> we'll see if this actually works. I still got a little bit of the spinach in here, but that's all right. It's all gonna be in the same pan anyway. I'm cutting it up just a little bit. I don't know if y'all can see that, just to kind of get a little bit better incorporated. Do any of y'all have any sort of dairy allergies or dairy versions that this recipe would, <laughs> like my version of the recipe would work out for? All right, good. Then y'all just go ahead and do the recipe as it says, because <laughs> it might be a little bit easier. I, I think someone has already done this recipe, right, Lynn? Yes, it was delicious. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so good. So you still have that part of it's in the freezer. <laughs> oh my gosh, that is wonderful. It was really good though. Yeah, it turned out really good. Um, that's awesome. 
I like a little more creamier pasta. Yep. I had too much pasta. I'm not sure I really measured it out that well. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, I don't, it says a whole eight ounce package. Let's see what ounce package this is. Oh, no, this is a 16 ounce package. So I'm only going to use half the pasta that came in this big giant box. And we'll see right. the pasta to sauce ratio and see how it compared to yours. That is so awesome that you already prepared it and that you're able to give kind of a review of how mine turned out, the kind of strange dairy-free version, and then your actual version. The swaps are pretty interesting. That's some good ideas there. Yeah. Um, so it actually is bubbling and getting pretty creamy. So that is good news. And now, let's see. It says whisk until the cheese is melted. It looks like everything's melted and kind of incorporated. And then add the Parmesan cheese, the garlic powder, and the pepper. So we'll do that now. Again, I have my little Parmesan cheese concoction. And the garlic powder and pepper. It says to add two teaspoons of garlic powder. That's quite a bit, actually. Um, I'm not going to measure it out because I don't know where my teaspoon is. So we're going to estimate. That was about one. That was about two. <laughs> Hopefully this doesn't turn out too garlicky. And then it'll be, it'll be fine. Yeah, extra garlic, I'm sure it would be okay. I love garlic and a little bit of pepper. I'll put a little bit more because I like pepper too. Okay, and now I'm gonna whisk all that together until it's thickened and bubbling. So I'm gonna turn it on like a medium heat, whisk it all together. It sure does smell good. It smells very garlicky. Um, that's pretty much the only thing coming through right now, but yeah, it smells really delicious and it looks very creamy. Um, and then after this, whenever it's all thickened and bubbling, we're gonna stir in the spinach, the artichoke and the pasta. So pretty quick, pretty easy. It's been 19 minutes. Um, I, the stuff that I did ahead of time, so the kind of draining of the artichoke took maybe a minute and cooking the pasta, that could have been going this entire time. The pasta could have been cooking this entire time. So it looks like this recipe would take about 20 to 25 minutes, depending on how fast you are in the kitchen. It definitely fit our category of those stress busters, meals under 30 minutes. All right, that's thickened, that's bubbling, looks really good. I'm gonna go ahead and add in, hopefully y'all can see this okay. I'm gonna go ahead and add in the spinach and the artichoke now. Do the artichoke first. Yum. Get all those pieces, stir that around. I'm gonna reduce the heat to like a low heat now because I just want it to get warm at this point. All right, artichoke is all incorporated. Now do the spinach. Pop that in there. I chose this recipe because, well, one, it's really easy to prepare, but two, um, it does have a lot of spinach in it. It cooked down to be not that much looking, but hopefully in our bowl, we can really see the green of the spinach coming through, as well as the little red specks of the pimentos, which I will go ahead and add like a tablespoon of those right now. Okay. Let me grab my spoon. You're gonna add just a little bit of these pimentos, which are just red bell peppers. Alrighty. Stir that up some more. Oh, y'all hear my dishwasher singing a song. <laughs> okay, now I will add the pasta and we will be good to go. Start plating this up. I'm gonna add about half of this because that was again a 16 ounce package of pasta that I used. And pasta 
You can freeze it and it defrosts totally fine. Um, it also keeps in the fridge for about a week. So if you wanted to, similar to me, just you just make the entire package at one time and then you can split it up into two meals if you'd like. I'm going to stir this around and then plate it and then try it, which is good because I am so hungry. <laughs> Hey, you know why you probably smell more garlic powder? Because you have more garlic powder in because of your vegan Yeah, cheese. that is so true. I did. <laughs> I had a little, even more. So mine's going to yeah. be extra garlicky. <laughs> Which is good. <laughs> yeah, I'm totally okay with that. Because again, really like garlic. All right, I'm going to grab one of the bowls. I'm going to grab the same artichoke bowl and serve myself in it. Let me grab a um, kind of serving utensil. All right. Got a big old chunk of artichoke. I see a tiny bit of the pimentos in there. There we go. That looks amazing. And then let me move y'all over here. We can try it together, kind of. Or you can at least watch me try it. Let me grab a fork. All right. So this is what the final product looks like. It has lots of spinach in it. You can see that it has chunks of artichoke in it. Just a couple of the, the red pimentos you can see. I would probably maybe even add a little bit more if you wanna give it some of that um, pretty red color. It took, it's 24 minutes now, so barely any time at all. And I already have this delicious meal prepared for myself. If you did um, want to add like a meat to it, like most of my recipes, I think it would be really good with either maybe like a ground turkey or a, a chicken, um, like turkey slices, chicken slices, um, something like that. I don't know if pork or beef would go super well with this because it's kind of a lighter um, thing. I think it is more deserving of a turkey or chicken, but let's go ahead and try it out. I'm going to get a little bit of spinach, a little bit of the artichoke and the pasta. Oh, one more piece of pasta on there. Mm, mm hmm man, I don't know if yours tasted like this, Lynn, but this is really good. So both versions turned out delicious. Lynn said hers was delicious and she followed the recipe, I think, exactly. And then I did my dairy-free version and it's still super, super good. Highly recommend this one. It is not too salty at all, which is good. Um, very creamy, very, very creamy. It has lots of vegetables like I had, like I said, from the spinach and the artichoke. And if you wanted to, you could probably add like maybe some sauteed mushrooms or um, even sauteed like actual red bell peppers if you wanted to cut up into like dice them and saute them with the, probably before you would need to add those in before you put the artichoke in because they take a little bit longer to cook than the artichoke. But that would be good too. So you could just load this with vegetables and then the sauce itself just will make everything really delicious. Um, but yeah, so that is pretty much all that I have for you. Do you have, does anyone have any specific questions or anything that they would want to swap in theirs that I could maybe brainstorm some ideas of what we could do instead or any comments? There's some on the chat if you see. Oh, let me see. Oh, yay. Okay. We have another lactose intolerant person in here. So the dairy-free version would be really good. Yes. Pimentos are just bell peppers. They're just red bell peppers. I think they're, they're called like heart red bell peppers. So they're smaller or something. I'm not sure exactly, but, um, mm, yes. Okay. What side would I add with it? Honestly, I feel like this is kind of one of those dishes that's just by itself. It has a lot of stuff in it. If you wanted to, like I said, add like a meat, like a chicken or a turkey sliced onto it, that would be really, really good. Put it in the sauce even maybe, that would be delicious. Um, 
but yeah, I don't know. I, I wouldn't eat it with a side. I would probably just eat it all by itself. If you wanted maybe a little side salad or something to even give yourself some more vegetables, but otherwise I think it's really delicious by itself. Yeah. That's how I ate it all by itself. Yeah. It's, it's really, really good. I highly recommend it. Um, any other questions or comments? All righty. Well, thank you guys for all attending today. The next time we're having a class will be October, nope, November 6th. It'll be November 6th. I'll post it in the Teams so that everyone will get a reminder about like two days before. And the next series is going to be all Thanksgiving themed. So I'm going to try to incorporate a lot of Thanksgiving-ish foods that are popular around this time. So things with celery and um, lots of um, very filling, maybe soups. I'm not sure. Haven't made the recipes yet. If y'all have any input or anything that you would want me to make, go ahead and send me an email. Um, my email address, if you want to take note of that, is just jsk55 at Texas State. And if you want me to make anything specifically Thanksgiving themed, then feel free to send me an email and I will try to incorporate maybe um, either that exact recipe or a kind of quote unquote healthy version of that recipe that won't take too much time. Alrighty. Well, thank you all for coming today. I'm going to go ahead and end the meeting. Also, if you, if you make this recipe, please send me feedback and I can try to send it out to everyone else. <laughs>